Boeing has been wrestling with the idea to bring a new mid-sized aircraft to the market, the legendary 797, for decades. Yet they actually designed and offered the perfect aircraft already, the never-built Boeing 787-3. In today's video, I'm going to show you what the 787-3 was, why it was a mistake not to build it, and why now it's too late for Boeing. Let's jump in. Hey, it's me, Nick here from Found and Explained. If you love aviation and other things about never built aircraft, then hit that subscribe and bell icon to never miss twice a week Found and Explained videos. Back in the early 2000s, when Boeing was designing the 787 to be the next true generation of aircraft, they created four versions, one less than what we have today. The first was the 787-8, with 242 seats, it was to replace the smaller Boeing 767. Next was the 787-9, with the same wingspan as the Dash 8, but longer and able to carry 280 passengers. This aircraft would fit snugly between the 767 and the smaller 777. Last was the 787-10 with 330 passengers, able to replace the smaller 777-200 aircraft. But there is an opportunity gap in that lineup. As many passengers as the 787-9, but without the range requirements, meaning an aircraft that would be effective for medium haul routes like New York to Chicago, Sydney to Melbourne, or Tokyo to Osaka. This would be called the 787-3. It would carry 290 to 330 passengers in a two-class configuration up to a range of 2,500 or 3,000 nautical miles, around about 5,500 kilometers. Thanks to its two-aisle design, it would have a faster turnaround than the single-aisle 757 or the larger 737, carrying more passengers and be more fuel-efficient for shorter routes, using different blended winglets as opposed to the classic raked wingtips of the 787. The small wingspan would also mean that it could fit into Class D gates, a common occurrence in Asian markets. For airlines, this would be a profit machine no-brainer, or so Boeing claimed. It would also solve the middle of the market problem. The 757, 767 and the Airbus A321 and smaller A330 each border on the just right Goldilocks gap between range and passengers. With the 787-3 fitting right in the middle, it would seem that Boeing was set to solve the problem once and for all. The 787-3, when it was offered to the market, became incredibly popular in Japan, with both Japan Airlines and ANA snapping up 43 orders. So why did it never go ahead? It all began with delays to the first version of the Boeing 787-8. Boeing had trouble with the materials, software, spare parts market, management of the program, striking workers, their base of contractors making incorrect parts and even had to do some redesigns to make the Dreamliner work. So much so that the program was dubbed the Nightmare Liner. These cumulative three years of delays hit Japan hard, with ANA and Japan Airlines both choosing to switch their 787-3s over to the sooner to the market 787-8s. There were also some flaws with the 787-3 that we should mention at this point. JOA and ANA realized that a 787-8 would be far more flexible in their fleets than the 787-3 and would offer little advantage in terms of economics over the existing 767. This was because the plane had all the features of a 787-8, including the heavy empty weight, but with less power and thus range. The airframe maker also claimed it could reduce the weight of the plane to match, but it was unable to during development. Boeing didn't have the time nor the resources to work out these flaws, and with the main orders gone, Boeing decided to retract the model and seal it away. A quick side note here, 
If Boeing did make the 787-3 back then, then we would have also seen Airbus rebuttal with the small A350-800 to compete. A video that we have covered right here. Jumping ahead to recent times in the market plays a very different picture. Rival Airbus released the A321XLR at the 2019 Paris Air Show, winning not only applause, but many orders from airlines. This plane design had an impressive range and the passenger capacity to match, filling in the lower section of the middle of the market. Because Airbus built this aircraft off their successive A320 platform twice over, the plane would hit the market far sooner than any clean sheet design. Boeing was going to release its own version of a middle of the market plane called the 797 at the same show in 2019. This aircraft would have been cheap to build with a metal body, not composites, and fitted in between the MAX and the 787. It would have sat 220 to 270 passengers, flown 4,000 to 5,000 nautical miles, and with Delta picked to be the launch customer. But problems with the 737 MAX took the headlines and Boeing was forced to switch tactics away from new product development. A replaced CEO later, Boeing seemed to have cancelled any new plane ambition. But in 2021, the platform has changed again. With travel now limited around the world and demand for flights at an all-time low, many airlines have moved away from larger, wide-body aircraft, an area that Boeing excels in for smaller, narrow-body designs like the Airbus A320 series. In fact, US carrier JetBlue recently fitted out its fleet of new A321 aircraft with lie-flat business class seats for trips across the Atlantic. Not the first to do so, but the start of a new trend of carriers choosing narrow bodies for roles once dominated by larger aircraft. It's a market that Boeing can't afford to miss. With the Boeing 737 MAX now returning to the sky, Boeing has spoken about their new mid-sized aircraft project, hinting that it will now bring to the market a new aircraft design and offer three different versions, ranging from a 200 to 270 seats, with the latter one able to cross the Atlantic for those lucrative European-bound routes much like the 757 did. Likely this aircraft will be based on the learnings of the 787 and effectively may be a reincarnation of the older 787-3 model. And according to some, this will be a good move. Boeing has a very good record of understanding how the 787 works, where its strengths are, how they can tweak it. What would happen if Boeing were to take the dust off the thing we called the 787-3, let's tweak it, let's take some weight out, let's do some clever stuff with it, and maybe that's our 797. Thus far, Boeing has been very reserved for what it wants to do with this 797 project, as it wants to ensure that it has the right plane, one very different from the current Airbus offering, for the market at the right time. After all, for all intents and purposes, Boeing now has the upper hand as rival Airbus has already revealed their middle of the market aircraft design. Or do they? As good as this sounds, 2021 is actually already too late for Boeing, and as it turns out, they missed the biggest opportunity in aviation already. One that could have been avoided had they built the 787-3 in the first place. Boeing's biggest enemy today is time. Any next Boeing aircraft design would not reach the market until at least 2030, too long to prevent rival Airbus from dominating the market with their own design. On the flip side, an existing 787-3, if rushed now, would be too weak compared to the newer engine and aircraft technology being developed beyond 2025. The 787-3 would effectively be the perfect jack of all trades, but master of none. While the 787-3 would be superior in airframe composite materials to the A321XLR, Airbus could easily upgrade both the fuselage and engine technology in a blink of an eye, matching or exceeding the Boeing 787-3 or a new Boeing 797. Plus, we also need to keep in mind that Boeing has been suffering for years with the 737 MAX problem. The 787 having production issues and its stock price 
has fallen with cautious investors. To spend $20 billion building a new aircraft, one that it can't afford to miss, and that airlines can't afford to order right now, puts Boeing in a difficult position. For Boeing going forward, they need to plug a hole in their lineup, be it an impossibly bigger 737 MAX, a restart of the 757, or a 767 passenger program with the learnings of the 787-3. All of them hard choices with no clear answer, but one that Boeing must make. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And thank you again so much for watching today's episode of Found and Explained.